Last time on That Sci-Fi Show, Jay talked about Batman, but will he ever make a part two for his every actor to ever play Superman video? Will it be about every actor to ever play Batman? Find out. Same fancy time, same fancy channel. Welcome to That Sci-Fi Show. My name is Jay. You guys go ahead and watch my new video entitled Every Actor to Ever Play Batman. Meanwhile, I'll just try to get rid of this bomb. So just like we did in the Superman video, we're going to leave out all the voice actors from the animated shows, movies, video games, and radio. That could easily be a whole video on its own, and based on your comments, that's a video I'll eventually make. One for Supes, and one for Batsy. So on to the Dark Knight. Batman was created by artist Bob Kane and writer Bill Finger, and first appeared in Detective Comics number 27 in 1939. You may also know Batman by such names as the Cape Crusader and the world's greatest detective. The first actor to ever put on the bat suit was Lewis G. Wilson in the 1943 serial Batman. Lewis was only 23 years old and left the entertainment industry after this series. It's set during the Second World War and in it, Batman and Robin were employed by the United States government to seek out and destroy the Nazi menace. It's always about Nazis in the Golden Age, isn't it? The next actor to take on the mantle of Batman was Robert Lowry in the 1949 serial Batman and Robin. Just like Wilson, Lowry only did one serial in the Batman franchise. However, he did make an appearance as Batman on the Adventures of Superman, and that would mark the first time that these two superheroes shared the screen in a crossover. Zack Snyder, eat your heart out. And now we come to a man who is to Batman, what Christopher Reeves is to Superman. Adam West's campy yet iconic portrayal of Batman in the 1960s television series was humorous, colorful, and good-natured. This was during the Silver Age of comics and the time of the Comics Code Authority, and so both the show and the comics at that time were pretty campy. The 1960s Batman series introduced iconic incarnations of Batman's rogues gallery that are still synonymous with Batman today, including the Joker, Penguin, the Riddler, and Catwoman. All four would go on to be featured in the 1966 movie cleverly titled Batman the Movie. In the 1960s and 1970s, there were social changes brewing in the United States regarding civil rights and equality, and there was a plan to do a political commercial regarding equal pay for all workers. Adam West was not having it. He wasn't interested in making any political statement either one way or the other. So in 1972, Dick Gutierrez portrayed Batman in an equal pay public service announcement. This is going to... That's going to ruin the comment section, isn't it? Hello, darkness, my old friend. While Batman comics continued to be written, its presence on television and film dwindled. This would change when Michael Keaton was cast in Tim Burton's new interpretation of the Cape Crusader, 1989's Batman. The environment was darker and the characterizations deeper, and it was hugely successful. In the movie, we see the Cape Crusader not just as Batman the Vigilante, but as Bruce Wayne the person. Batman was just your normal, average, everyday billionaire son compelled to fight crime because his parents were murdered by a criminal who would go on to become the Joker. Comics fans will be quick to point out that this is a departure from Batman and the Joker's origin in the comics. Jack Nicholson as the Joker was a hit and revitalized the franchise. This also presented a Batman not in tights and spandex, but instead in a fitted and armored bodysuit, a tradition that carries on to this day, even surviving the advent of bat nipples. Michael Keaton would return to the role for the sequel released in 1992, Batman Returns, where he was joined by two of the most famous characters of the Gotham universe. The Penguin, portrayed by Danny DeVito, and Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. Val Kilmer would be next to put on the Batman mask in 1995's Batman Forever. This would mark the first time that Robin had been introduced into this incarnation of the franchise. Chris O'Donnell was chosen for the role, and the film also featured Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face and Jim Carrey as the Riddler. 
There are many Batman fans that were not satisfied with Val Kilmer in the franchise and he never returned to the role again. I've got just one question about this one. Why is it that Harvey Dent turned into a white man as soon as his role was upgraded to one of the main villains? Ah, uh, seriously? I'm gonna get hate comments. Hello darkness, my old friend. So that brings us to the war crime that was 1997's Batman and Robin. This time it would be George Clooney under the mask who, fun fact, once said that if anyone would come up to him on the street and admit that they paid to see this movie, he would pull out his wallet and give them their money back. Although a return to the role of Robin and Batgirl was introduced as played by Alicia Silverstone. It was, it was as bad as it sounds. Again, new interpretations of classic Batman villains were introduced. This time, it was Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, Arnold Schwarzenegger as the scientist turned villain Mr. Freeze, and Jeep Swenson as Bane. Joel Schumacher directed both Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, and the studio wanted to leave the dreary visuals of Tim Burton behind and make movies to sell toys. And so sell toys they did. It's been said that on the set of Batman and Robin, Schumacher would remind actors before each take that they were to act like they were in a cartoon. And that's how bat nipples happened. We're all responsible for this sad time in our history and it's our responsibility to make sure that it never happens again. Moving on, in 2000, the OnStar company, which provides interactive computer services to clients while driving, opted to do a new commercial marketing their in-car service. The commercial featured Batman in the Batmobile using the OnStar service. The role of Batman was given to Bruce Thomas in these advertisements. And then in 2002, there was a very short-lived television series called Birds of Prey, which was intended to focus on the female characters of the DC Universe. In one episode, Batman was shown but was never named, and to this day, humorously, he's referred to as the Unknown Batman. Next up, Christian Bell was cast in a new interpretation of the Batman saga. In 2005, Batman Begins offered a deeper background and a much darker vision of the character. Bell would play the role two more times in 2008's Dark Knight and 2012's Dark Knight Rises. This trilogy was very successful and continues to influence superhero movies even to this day. Some might say the gritty, realistic style has gone too far, and those people are right. Then in 2014, a new and very dark series was added to the Fox television lineup called Gotham. It's essentially the origin story of Gotham City and all the heroes and villains that populate it. David Mazul was given the role of a preteen Bruce Wayne. He's not played Batman per se, but he will be Batman eventually. Much like Tom Welling in the role of Clark Kent, I'm sure he'll don the cape and cowl for at least one scene. If not, you can come back to this video and tell me how wrong I was in the future. Most recently, the role of Batman was given to actor Ben Affleck in 2016's Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice semicolon this title is too damn long. Many were worried about Affleck in the role, and although the movie didn't do well with many critics and fans, a majority of fans seem to agree that Affleck was one of the best parts of the film. In this movie, we see an aging Batman face off with Superman, as portrayed by Henry Cavill, as the two don't see eye to eye for, I don't know, reasons, I guess. If you ask me, the movie tried to do too many things and was rushed. Batman has gone from campy to dark and surreal to cartoonish and onto gritty and quote unquote realistic, but has it gone too far? Why can't Superman smile? Why are these movies color graded so dark? For God's sake, tell a damn joke, man! Make Superman smile! Why is he brooding all the time? Ah! But I digress. That's every actor to ever play a live-action Batman. Did I leave any out? What obscure Batman portrayals did I miss? Head down to the comments section and tell me off real good. One more thing before we go, did you guys know that this channel now has a Discord server? Click the link in the description below to get invited and I'll see you there. This has been Bat Sci-Fi Show, and I'm Batman.